afternoon and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, House for Home Pros, How to Rock Your House Profile. My name is Michelle Lettman and I am the content and media producer here at Surefire Local. I am also joined by our webinar ninja, Steve Eastlack, who is ready and excited to help answer your questions. Speaking of those questions, you can communicate with us using the question box, which is on the right-hand side of your screen. Why don't you go ahead and see if you can locate that right now and let us know where you're joining us from today. We'll be sending messages and discussion questions to the group throughout the webinar, so be sure to check that out. Before we get into rocking your house profile, I wanted to tell you a little bit about how Surefire Local started and the story behind how the Surefire Local Marketing Cloud is the marketing solution that works as hard as you do. It all started with a small business owner who taught his son the value of hard work. That son, who is our founder and CEO, Chris, went on to lead several venture-backed web 2.0 startups, but he never forgot the memories of watching his dad get up early in the morning to track down new business. He wondered if there was a way for 21st century technology to multiply the efforts of small local companies like his father's. Turns out there was. Surefire Local started with an idea, a way to help small businesses rank higher in search engines. Today, it's an unbeatable marketing engine backed up by expert consultants with one mission, help local businesses generate new business by getting discovered online. And the Surefire Local Marketing Cloud allows you to do three things. See more like what you're spending, where it's going, and how much business it's bringing back. Do more which by making all of your online marketing activities work harder, and all from a single login, from your website to social media to directories, and then get more help. You'll be partnered with a seasoned marketer expert who knows your industry and your business. This way, we can get your marketing back to work bring in new customers. So over the years, we've had the privilege of working alongside hundreds of local companies and watching many of them double and triple their leads with Surefire Local. Some call it a digital marketing transformation, but we just call it a hardworking marketing for hardworking people. So today, one lucky attendee is going to take home a Google Home mini smart speaker. We, we will be announcing the winner at the end. If you don't win one though, you don't have to go home empty handed. Everyone here today is eligible for Google Chrome. Google Chromecast and our house ebook, but I will get more to that in a little bit. Today we are joined by Lindsay Sutton. Lindsay is part of the industry marketing team at House and that which is an innovative residential design platform and community. I know she has a great presentation for you today, so for now I'm going to pass it on to Lindsay. Lindsay, take it away. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me today and all of you on the line. Thanks so much for joining me today talking about how you can really maximize your house presence. What are some of the steps that you need to take to really get the most out of your house profile and really make sure that it's working for you. I'm also going to be sharing some new tools that we have on the site. Our engineers are always hard at work and so they're always coming up with some new things to hopefully make your lives a little bit easier. So just to give you a really short background on the house for those of you that may not be as familiar. It was actually started by this lovely couple, a husband and wife team in the San Francisco Bay Area. It was about end of 2009, early 2010. And they were coming at this process as homeowners going through a complete home renovation. And they found the process just to be a little frustrating. You know, there weren't great resources to learn about professionals in their area. And then when they were working with someone, they found that to be challenging. And they're having to go through magazines and rip out photos and drag around their binders. If they wanted advice from people who had done it before, they're trying to go other places and find it. And they thought there has to be something better, really one place where we can have all of this and get all of this information that we want. So that is how House was started, really with them going to work every day, put the kids to bed, and then in the evening working away on House. We've grown a little bit since they were working from their living room. We now have over 40 million unique monthly users. They're about 90% homeowners. And we have 1.5 million of you professionals. So architects, designers that have gone on, created profiles, and are really working to have a robust presence. We also have house users in every country around the world. So it's been really fun for us at House as we do research, as we're watching design trends, to really be able to get this big global perspective on everything, but then also start to focus in on specific areas. It's really been fun to see how design has influenced each other just globally these days. So I want to share, as I'm speaking about research, I do want to share a little bit of the research. You all can go to House. We ha it's house.com forward slash research. We have a ton of information on there, all for a free download. But I just want to give you some high-level information before we dive into building your house profile. 
So what we are seeing, so we do kind of these big studies. One of them is house and home. It's actually the largest study in the industry now. We had about 190,000 people take it around the world. And we really wanted to know what are people doing? What is the scope of their projects? So we saw year over year spend has been going up for renovations. Now, first time home buyers, this is the big one. That spend went up 22%. Now, repeat home buyers, baby boomers, they're still the ones that are driving the renovations. But when you're looking at millennials, you can see their spend went up 7%. First time home buyers went up 22%. It's a group that you want to keep your eye on, especially if you're looking at your business for this long game. I can relate to this coming from the Midwest, living in San Francisco. You have this idea of what your first home is going to look like, and then you start to look out there at what's available in your budget, and it's kind of a harsh reality. And so first time home buyers and millennials are finding themselves in homes that are older and need more renovations or also a little smaller than they expected. And so they're really starting to invest in these projects. When we're looking at the scope, if you look at kind of the top of this on the right hand side, this is the average number of rooms that are being remodeled at a time. So first time home buyers are doing about three and a half rooms, repeat home buyers do almost four rooms at a time, and then long term homeowners are two and a half. So across the board, we're seeing that the scope of renovations is pretty big there. How people are paying for these renovations, cash is still king, but we have noticed an increase in credit card use. And then what are the big challenges for homeowners? Staying on budget, that's a big one we know. Finding the right products and then finding the right professionals like all of you. And this is a big one why I wanted to share before we started looking at your individual profiles and how you can maximize them. Think about these challenges and think about addressing them in your profile and when you're putting up projects of the work that you've done or maybe the products that you carry. People are struggling to find this. They want information about it even though they're not DIYers. So try and give them as much as you can. We're really seeing, you know, 2017, it's been on track to be another really great year. We saw that more than half of homeowners on house are already in a renovation or are still planning to start one. Um, on average, homeowners plan to spend about 27,000 on home renovations, so a little bit higher than 2016, so that's a good sign. People are spending more on these projects. And again, first time home buyers, this just dives into it a little bit more for those of you that love all of the data and specific numbers. Just showing, keep your eye on these first time home buyers and millennials. They're really stepping up what they're spending on their projects. Again, still significantly less if you look on the right hand side the graph there are 55 and over group how much they're spending and then if you look and see with the 25 to 34 year olds still significantly less than them but they are increasing so definitely keep your eye on them this is another thing that i think is really critical for everybody to, to look at this is so on the left hand side kind of those lighter green bars that you're looking at that is the average planning time in month. And then on the right hand side, the darker green is the average construction length in month. So when you look at this, so kitchen, people are spending almost eight months planning out their kitchen project, master bathroom, almost seven months. But then when some of this that's really interesting, people are spending almost six months planning a laundry room renovation, almost seven months planning a home office, four months planning a closet renovation. Homeowners are spending a ton of time. Again, not because they want to do it themselves. They know they need all of you. But we also have this expectation that there's a wealth of information online and homeowners want to be informed. They want to make sure that they're picking the right person and they're using the right products. So again, remember this when you're thinking about your online presence. As I look at marketing and I'll not to throw too many numbers at you, but one of the things I've been reading for a while and the number varies a little bit, but generally it's about 70% of the buying decision is made online. So whether they're the buying decision being you, the professional they're going to work with, which products they want to use, homeowners want to feel like they can really get 70% of the way there. So when they pick up the phone and call you or walk through your showroom, it's more of a formality. They really already feel good that you're the right person for them. But that means you need to provide enough information that they can get there. And then again, I pointed out what are the big challenges for folks. For millennials, it's really more about staying on budget. For our baby boomers, they're struggling to find the right products and you the right professionals. So again, as you're thinking about these two different groups, make sure that you're addressing their challenges. Okay, so now let's dive into house. Now that you kind of are armed with a little more information, what are people doing these days? House is meant to be the technology that brings all of these pieces that were once a little bit fragmented together. 
And this is really based on kind of the demand of homeowners these days. What information do they want? Do they want to be able to talk to other people? And so we've pulled all these and made it so when a homeowner is on, and no matter where they're at in this process of doing a project, it remains this integrated experience. And again, this is going to be an important thing for all of you. You want to make sure that you're in these areas. So first one, we have photos. That's really what House is known for. We have, I think, getting close to 16 million photos on the site. They're going on, especially in the early stages, and doing those six, seven, eight months of planning to get inspired about their projects. As they're looking at this and this inspiration, then we know, okay, I want to be able to hire someone that can actually do this. So it's connected right on the right hand side is information about the professional that did the work. They can also read articles about similar projects that our editors and some professionals have helped write so they can get a little bit more educated. What are some of the questions or problems they need to think about? They can also see discussions that relate to this photo. So if they just want other people's opinion, they can see that. And then we have our marketplace. So when they see some of these products that they really love, they can actually go in and buy them right here. So it's taking all of these different pieces and no matter where someone is on house, it's making sure that they all stay really connected. One of the biggest things for you as professionals to keep in mind, when you are uploading the photos of your work, they're not just gonna be lost out there on house. Again, your name, your company name is gonna stay right there with it. Someone clicks on that, they're going to go right to your professional profile to learn about you and hopefully pick up the phone and hire you. So now let's start diving in. What do you need to do to really maximize your house profile and make sure you're getting that return on it? So pretty simple, and I'm going to go into detail, but one, actually go in and set up a professional profile. If you've taken that first step, then we're going to go into the next step of actually filling it out, give them lots of information, get up photos of the work that you have done so people can get inspired and come back to you. Reviews are critical. In that house, house and home survey that we do, it is every year the number one thing that homeowners say they need to see from a professional. Even if they got your name as a referral, they still want to be able to go online and see that everyone else thought you were really great. And then finally, I'm just going to show you a couple ways to, again, make sure that you're showing up everywhere for people by using idea books to collaborate with your clients, make that process easier, and then participating in discussions. So first up, filling out your profile. When you log into house, this is what you're going to see. Top right-hand side, you see your house, and then in that drop-down, it's edit profile. That's going to open it up. So now you get to go in and start talking about yourself. So I pulled, this is a general contractor. You can see Sneller Custom Homes and Remodeling because they've done a good job. It's a really robust profile. So at House, we like to encourage all of you to get those nice stalkers. You want to give people enough of a reason to come back and learn more about your business. Again, it's a long planning process. So you want to give them enough that they're going to come back. One of the things I can see up on the left-hand side, they have a personal photo over a logo, which is great. Even though things are online these days, people are still looking to make that personal connection, especially with home projects. You know, this is very personal to these homeowners. So you want to build that personal connection with them. We strongly encourage, whether it's your team, like in this case, if it's whoever started the company, whoever that may be, have your photo versus a logo. Don't worry, it's not going to be any bigger than this, so don't panic that it has to be professionally done, but it just is going to show those smiling faces. Now, if your logo is important to you, like Sneller has done, have everybody wearing a shirt that has the logo on it so you still get that branding. But then let's go in and look at what they actually have in their business description. And one of the reasons I love them is because when we think business description, I read things that tend to seem a little bit cold. Sneller Customs Home does a really good job of remembering that personal side. What would change in your life if you loved your home? Each time we hand over the keys, there's a spark in our customers' eyes that wasn't there before. It's proof that when a house changes, people's lives change with it. So we go down, Matt is a graduate of Texas A&M University, is an active member of the Greater Houston Builders Association, serves on the board of the Builders Council. So really, there, this is a good example of pulling on those two sides, and we know but especially when it comes to decision making, people make decisions emotionally, and then they need to back it up rationally. So when you're writing out your business description here, think about that. When someone is reading this, they should feel excited. What would change in your life if you loved your home? That gives that feeling of excitement. Oh, what would change in my life? So when you take a look at your business description and, you know, maybe have the kids or family members do an edit for you, they're going to be a good audience. They'll give you that critical feedback if you need it. Do they get excited learning about your business? Don't panic if you're not a creative writer. 
just walk us through how you got to this stage in your career. What schooling do you have? How long have you been in business? That's good rational stuff on there. Are you part of any associations? But then what projects inspire you? What really stands out about the work that you do or the customer service that you provide? Tell us both of those things and you're gonna have a really robust business description here. So spend some time on that. Again, all text on houses searchable. So the more text you put in here, the more often you're gonna show up in search results. Once you've spent some time on this, then just work your way through that edit profile. You're literally just gonna keep scrolling your way down. One of the big things to do, and this has changed a little bit, so if you haven't been in your profile in a while, you definitely wanna go in and update this. We've now added these little check boxes. In the past, you would go in and just freely type in text on areas served and services provided. But we wanted to do a better job matching when a homeowner comes to our professional directory saying they want to hire someone. We wanted to make sure that you were really getting the people that needed a service you provide. So go into the services provided, check off all of those, check off all of the areas you serve. We have an other in both of these. So if we've missed something, you can go in and add it. You're also going to want to go in, and this is something I see people skip, but it's a big one. So you can talk about certification and awards that you've won. And then we have affiliations. So we've worked our way from the national level down locally. These have all been approved by each association to get that logo up there, to have some information about your group. So now you can go in, and what you're going to do is you're going to type in the search bar, whatever your group is, just as a little heads up, it depends on how they were entered. So sometimes you may type in NAHB, or it's going to be, you actually have to type out National Association of Home Builders. Give it a couple tries. You're going to see it pop up in that drop down, and then you're going to click add. So now that is actually going to show up right on the front of your profile. Nice little branding piece. It shows you're part of associations. You're up to date with the latest and greatest. It's also a nice marketing piece for your associations. You know, there might be other professionals or new to the industry that don't know you are available as a resource. If anyone clicks on that, it'll give more information about you. If any of you are going in and doing a search and don't find your association, let us know. Have an administrator contact us. Anyone that, you know, can give us the permission of, yes, here's the logo. Let's get a page up there for our members, and we'll make sure we get that added. Okay, photography. This is huge. So we start with your profile because I don't want people finding your photos and then they go back to your business to learn about you and there's nothing there. So spend some time on your profile. Get that nice and filled out. But then you're going to want to focus on photos. We know, again, this is a really big one. It's really where many people are starting in this process. Photos are a high impact touch point. And the way that people are gathering information is changed. We all know we live in a mobile society. More than half of all activity on house is done from mobile devices. You know, we're standing in line at the grocery store trying to put the kids to bed. And, you know, you're sitting and looking at your phone and swiping through things. And photos are really powerful in that micro moment. Someone is standing there to really tell a strong story about your business. So make sure when you're uploading your photos, and this is just focus your energy on the things that are going to be the most productive. Make sure you're focused on the photos that tell the best story about your business. Kind of, I say, give yourself that test. When you are uploading a photo to your profile, ask yourself, does this accurately represent the very best work that I do? If it doesn't, maybe don't waste your time putting it up there. You want to have really powerful photos. And I'm going to show you how all how to upload them in just a second. One of the other things I want to point out, so this is a great portfolio. And we know kind of those basic things that people want. Okay, I want to learn about their business. Are they actually good people? Do other people think that? We're looking at reviews. Then I want to see a portfolio of the work that you've done. Well, your house profile is great for that. So when you're going in, again, kind of think of the message that you're trying to tell with your photos. We have many professionals, and this is Martha O'Hara from Minneapolis, and I believe she has an office now in Texas, works with the same photographer and stager for every one of her projects. So when people come to her, they are very clear. They know exactly what they are going to get. Maybe some of you are really trying to move your business in a different direction. You know, you'd really love to be focused on modern projects. Well, make sure that your projects, especially those at the top, are all focused around your modern work. Make sure that you're really telling the story that you want to tell. So when you are in your house profile, same thing, you've logged in, you see that edit profile up on the top. We have many ways that you can go in and upload photos. You can see on the right, upload photos or files, or there's this big plus sign. So I'm gonna pause here for a second because you can see this is under projects. So the way it works for photos, you're gonna log into your account, you're gonna add photos into your projects. Those projects will always stay on your profile, and those photos are also gonna be added into our photo stream. 
That way other people can search them, find them, and come back to you. Idea books, which I'm gonna go into a little bit later, everyone on the house has them, and it's just where you're saving things that you like, that you're inspired by. So for you, you're always gonna to wanna to be putting your photos in projects. So you're gonna go in, grab the photos you want in that project, and then you're gonna see a screen pop up like this that has on the right-hand side a bunch of drop-downs, and this is critical. I told you again, all house, or all house, all text on house is searchable. Well, the only way that we can make your photos searchable is if you tell us what's in them and you add some text to it. So essentially, wherever we ask you a question, whether it's in your profile or on your photos, take a second to fill it out because this is gonna make a huge difference. With 15 million photos, if nobody knows what's in it, it's really not likely anyone's gonna find it. So you're just gonna work your way down. Tell us what room it is. Then those drop downs are gonna change. So you can fill those out. If some of them don't apply to your photo, don't worry about it. You can leave those blank. Just pick as many as you can. There's also gonna be an open square and I don't think I included, no, I did not. I don't think I included a shot of this, but it's right here with these drop downs. There's a keyword section. So these drop downs that you've used are pretty general. You wanna use your keywords to go in and talk about everything in this photo. They are private, so only you and House know how you have keyworded something. So you're not taking credit for someone else's work. You're not endorsing certain products. You are simply telling us what your photo is an example of. So if anyone does a search, we can provide it in those search results. So go from left to right and tell me everything you see in this photo. Those are all perfect keywords. Try to be as specific as you can. The other thing that you wanna fill out in your projects, and again, this is something new, so if you haven't been in for a little bit, this is something you'll want to go in and update on your projects. We found, and it's again one of those little things, homeowners are much more likely to look at your profile and look at your projects when they see that you've done work in their local area. So if someone is searching for a kitchen and bath remodeler in Dallas, Texas, when that pops up, we then show how many projects that professional has done in Dallas, Texas, or whatever area they're searching. So again, you need to provide us with this information. It's one of those little things that we found is making a big difference here. So when you're uploading your photos, you've added all those keywords, you've used those drop downs, you then are taken to this last page on a project. It lets you go in, rearrange the order of your photos, you can put a description of the project, this is a great way to talk about what you were trying to accomplish. Again, think about that education piece that folks are looking for. You know, maybe you did some aging in place things in the kitchen and you want to highlight some of those features. A great place to do that. Description is public, just know, different than keywords. And then underneath that, you can see address. So go in and be as specific as possible. We will never publish this address but it lets us pull up specific neighborhoods when someone gets really specific and is searching. So go in and add that address information for all of your projects. Again, we're only gonna show that neighborhood or that city or town, but you do wanna be specific. The other thing you can add here, and this is something that can really help you know, make your lives a little bit easier, especially those of you, maybe you work together on projects all the time, there's three or four of you, you can go in right here and give credit to another professional or any other professionals that worked on this project. If they have a house profile, they're gonna get a notification saying, hey, Lindsay Thedeen's trying to give you credit on this kitchen remodel project. You say, yep, check it off, I did actually work on that. That project is now also gonna show up on your profile. So it's really nice to just give each other professional credit on this, but it's also a nice way to really minimize the amount of work that you have to do. Maybe you each take turns. All right, this time it's your turn to get the photos and get them on house and share it with us. So it's a nice way that you guys can share that. One of the resources that we have for you is the House Photographer Network. You can see house.com forward slash get photos. Totally free network. We just created it as a way to organize all of the photographers that were joining and creating profiles on house. And so when we were putting them all in this network, we said, okay, there is a catch. You have to be willing to offer a special package to first time clients. So it's eight daytime photos for either 200, 750 or $1,500. So when you go in, you're gonna see state or country, let's say you're in the DC area, pick that. You're gonna see all of the photographers that are available and their price points. The nice thing is they have profiles just like all of you. So you'll be able to read reviews, see examples of their work, learn a little bit more about them before you reach out. So this is a way just to help you get some of those beautiful photos on there. 
All right, getting reviews. So you've got this great profile. You have your beautiful photos, so they're nice and searchable. You're getting all sorts of interest, lovely stalkers all over the place. When it gets to that final point of them thinking, okay, I really need to make a decision on who I'm gonna hire, like I said, reviews are really that number one thing that they're looking for. So it's really important that you spend some time getting reviews on your profile. We have a handy little tool for you. So again, you logged into your profile, You'll see right under your company name, it says get reviews. When you click on that, this form pops up. So in the top box, you can enter the email addresses of everyone you wanna request a review from. Underneath that, we have an auto-populated message, but I would definitely encourage you to change it, make it a little personal. You know, if you're asking 30 people at a time, it can be super personal, but just how would you typically write an email? If you really love the message you've crafted, you can see you can save it. So next time when you go in to request more reviews, you don't have to rewrite that. It's already sitting and waiting for you. And then you're going to hit send. And what happens when you hit send is every email address in that top box is going to get that message from you. It's going to come from the email address you have on file in your house account. So it looks like you sent them a direct email with this message. They won't see you asked 30 other people. It's just going to look like you sent them that direct message and it's going to have the link right to the review form. So they don't have to go searching anywhere. When someone takes the time to review you, all of those reviews come to house first, goes through a little vetting process. We sort of review all reviews. We just wanna make sure it's not spam, it's not a competitor, everything looks good. Once that all looks solid, then that will be posted to your house profile. So that's our process for reviews here. One of the things though you can think of if you are trying to get specific, and obviously you can do a lot of outreach, just those general, but there are probably some projects that are really special, that are big, it's really important that you get that review. And that's gonna be when it's important to really personalize those requests. So some of the ways you can do it, you know, ask them how they're enjoying something specific that you added in there. Talk about how their family or maybe a specific family is enjoying something that you worked on. During the holiday season, find out how they're decorating their space. Something to open up that personal conversation with you shows that you remember their project, it mattered to you as well, and then you have that re review request in there. The other thing you can all do and I would encourage you is to respond to all reviews. Now, just as a heads up, they are public, so you are not sending them a direct message, but it really goes a long way. Again, homeowners are looking to have that relationship, to have that connection. They like to see that, you know, this is a big deal for you. It's not just another check at the end of the day. And so the reason that we make this comment public is really it's for everyone that's coming along and thinking of working with you. Because now they can see, wow, you did a great job. This person gave you a great review and you took the time to go in and respond and thank them. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate. You can see in this example, thank you for the great review. We appreciate all our clients, no matter how large or small the job may be. Just something simple. It's just showing that you're acknowledging that relationship. So to respond to your reviews, click on the review and it opens up a spot for you to reply. We also have some resources for you. I know I'm giving you a lot of links, but I think you're gonna get the recording after so you can reference it. It's info.house.com review tips. So we have this great little guide. It can feel a little intimidating to put yourself out there online, especially with reviews, but we have a lot of best practices, how to handle it if, you know, at some point you are gonna get that negative feedback from somebody, what are some of those best practices to still make sure that it doesn't ruin your reputation. So just another resource for everybody. So idea books and questions. These are the other ways that you can really get in and try to enhance your experience on house and make sure you're getting the most out of it. So idea books, like I said, everybody on house has them. It's a place that you're just saving things that you like. But we found that they're a really great way to collaborate with your clients through the process, to streamline that, to make it easier for everybody. So it is gonna be much easier to get that five-star review at the end. So you can see we have add or edit collaborators right underneath the idea book name. That's gonna allow you to go in and add anyone that you want to be able to see this. Now just know all idea books are public by default, so you are gonna to wanna to make this private because you never know what people may say in this as you're working through the process. Sometimes it's easier for them to say what they don't like sometimes. So you're gonna go in and add anyone that you want to be part of this. This is also a nice place to add anyone that you know at the end of the day, their opinion matters, they're gonna have that power of veto. Even if they're not gonna be there for every project, it's just an easy way to keep them in the loop and that way they can speak up if they see something like, yikes, you guys said you loved it, but I really hate it, before you get too far in the planning process. 
So now, when you create this, you add everybody you want in there to have access to it. When they log into their house account, that idea book's gonna be waiting for them. And now they can start to go in and add photos. I would encourage you, if they say, oh my gosh, I already have this idea book, I have a thousand photos in there I wanna share with you, I would encourage you to go ahead and make another one for them. That way you also know it's private, you know who has access to it, but it's a good way to get them to focus down. I love that you already have a thousand ideas. Now let's take this new one I just created and really start to hone in on what you want. So I want you to pick your 10 best photos and start to add those in there so we can really start to work on these. We've really found that it makes this design process so much easier. It's so much easier instead of them trying to explain exactly what they have in their head, just to go in, find some things they like and add them in there. It's really gonna take the guesswork. So this is where when you hit that add or edit collaborators, you can add anyone in there, right in the advanced settings. And when you're creating a new idea book, it's gonna pop up and prompt you right away. Do you want this to be public or private? But you can always go in this advanced settings and change that if you'd like. We've added some new features and I'm gonna share some more of them with you, but a couple of them, you know, we know we heard you, those of you that are really utilizing this, then you end up with a thousand idea books. So you can actually go in and do searches whether it's by the person that you actually shared this idea book with. If you just remember a snippet of a conversation or a comment that was made, you can go in and search your idea books that way. So it's a nice way to help you stay organized. We also have put idea books on steroids. We have added this sketch feature. So here you can see it, it's available both in the free app and on your desktop. You're just looking for sketch, it has the little pencil with the squiggle. But it literally allows you to go in and start sketching on photos. So it's not just adding photos to an idea book and making comments. Now you get to start to be really specific, draw some arrows in there, put some text. Was this the pendant light that you really liked? Or what about these stools? They could put a sticker in there. There's a bunch of little tools that make this fun. You can put a tape measure if you're trying to show them dimensions. But now you really get to start and be specific on these photos. The other thing you can do, I know it's rare, but every once in a while you may run into a situation where you find something outside of house that you would like to have as part of this discussion and have as your idea book. Well, we've also added this save to idea book button. So all you're gonna do is literally grab this green button with your mouse, drag it up to your toolbar, and then when you're scrolling around and you find something that you like or you're like, okay, I think that is the chair that my client is really gonna love, you're gonna click on that save to idea book button that you just put up there on your toolbar. And now it's gonna open up every image that's available on that web page. And now you get to pull in, in this case, that red chair, you get to pick the one that you want and save it into your idea book. And it's nice, it keeps the source of it. So if they're like, yep, that's what I want, you know exactly where to go and buy it. We also have view in my room. So this is available for products that you find on house. So you might be recommending some products on things. And they're like, I think I like those stools, but I'm just not exactly sure how they're gonna work within this space. You now can click on that view in my room, take a picture of whatever space you're actually working in and pull those products into it. And we've also added 3D to this. So you literally can have them to scale, turn them around to show people exactly what these products and elements are going to look like right within that space. So it really becomes a living and breathing project. The other thing I was talking about, so idea books, using all of those things so you can go in and sketch and draw, pull in products that you find, show them within their space. Kind of this last area and one of the things you can do to keep your profile robust, kind of keep you at the top so you stay engaged, is participating in discussions. So again, you see this really long planning process. One of the other things that homeowners wanna know about you are a couple things. They wanna know that you're an expert in your field and they want to know that you're a personality they're gonna be able to get along with. Those were a couple of the other things they said. In addition to reviews, they wanna know that. And participating in discussions is a great way to show off those things. We have on average around like 350,000 discussions that are active at any given time. So I promise whatever your specialty is, I know there is something in there for you. So all you have to do is go in and do a search, whatever that may be. Maybe you're really great with hardwood flooring. So go in and look at all of the discussions around hardwood flooring and just take some time. You know, once a month, twice a month, we know you're not gonna be uploading new projects every day and getting reviews, but this is a good way to stay engaged. Go in and answer a couple of those questions. And those are actually gonna stay on your profile. So they're not just lost out there, but now when someone is coming and they're looking at all this information about you, thinking about hiring you, they can actually look at the discussions tab on your profile, see the questions that were asked, 
and that you took the time and your tone how you answered them. We also in this discussion area have our pro to pro section just as a resource for all of you. This is a locked section. Only if you are logged in as a professional in the community do you even see that it's there. So homeowners don't know. But it's a place for you all to go in and have discussions with each other. You know, if you have questions about marketing, if maybe you're doing a project that you haven't done before, you're a little nervous about, it, this is a safe way you can go in and really support each other in the community and help each other out. Okay, what do you need to do to be successful? Well, fill out a business description and actually fill out your professional profile here. Upload your photos and make sure you add text to them. So when we ask you, tell us about the project, Add these drop downs here, some keywords. Take the time to fill those out. It's better to focus your efforts on fewer, really beautiful quality photos and to have that information so people can actually find you. Then make sure you get reviews. As professionals, you can take the time to review each other. People like to see that you're nice, not just to that paying client, but you're really nice and well connected to everyone in the process. So you can all help each other out. Once you've done this and you're starting to get all these great new projects coming in, Use idea books to try and streamline that process and make it easier for everybody. And then join in some discussions every now and again, just showing off you're an expert and that you are the friendly professional that they will want to work with. Okay. All right, thank you, Lindsay. So while we take a quick break, um, I wanna mention that we are scheduling consultations on either Tuesday, October 31st, or Thursday, November 2nd, for a demo of the Surefire Local Marketing Cloud. Um, if either of those days don't work for you, just select, please email me to schedule a call and we will follow up with you to pick a day that works best for you. Um, after your introduction to the cloud, you will receive our house ebook, which is exactly what we're talking about today, and a Google Chromecast. So take a second here to fill out the poll. Um, and actually, we do have a few questions that came through, but I want to have one of them answered now, if that's cool with you, Lindsay. Absolutely. Okay, so someone asked, does your research show average length of project planning for exterior projects like siding, windows, and doors? Yes, it does. So I, like I said, I just pulled some of them, kind of that higher level stuff, just to show people are spending a ton of time planning. But if you go to House and go in our research section, all of that's available, and it really gets down into the nitty gritty like that. Awesome. All right, so we're going to take a few more seconds here for so you get your whole answered. Oh, and actually, one more question. <laughs> yes. Is the Watch My Video profile available in Canada? Currently, it's not. So actually, for all of you, um, we, we've added some new things, which I'm going to touch on in our Pro Plus program, which is the local advertising. That's an option for people that are interested. We've added some new things. One of them was that video, that Watch My Video. It's a one-minute profile of your business. Um, the response has been overwhelming, so much so that we're sort of reconfiguring how we can get producers and people out to actually film them um, a little bit more efficiently. So as of right now, we're kind of have put a pause on that just across the board as far as adding new people where we get caught up because, you know, we send out a whole team to film it, produce it, do all the editing on it. So um, for right now, sorry, not just Canada, all of you, it is a pause, but something to keep in mind. Um, you know, as soon as we start to roll that out again, Canada, you're definitely in it. Great. All right. So we're going to close up the poll here now, and then, Lindsay, you can take it back. Awesome. Sorry, you guys got a, sort of a little break from me. So I wanted to show you, so this goes in, so we talked about Sketch a little bit, so you can go in and start to get really interactive in your idea books, hopefully make that process a little bit better. I just wanted to show off some other examples. We have some other templates in there of things that you can use. We have a whole bunch of different mood boards. I showed you guys Save to Idea Book. I won't make you look at all of this again. I just am driving it home that you have to use idea books because it will make your life so much easier. The other thing you can do in your idea books is you can actually go in and save an image to an idea book by the URL. So you'll see this right when you go in to add a photo. If you want to add it from another website, if you want to use the house bookmarklet, if you want to use it by using that URL, always, again, just to try and help make sure that Everything is stored in the right place and your life will be nice and easy. So this is exactly what it looks like. Again, it does the same thing that I was showing you when you use that save, use that little button that we have if you're scrolling around. If you use the URL, it does the same thing. Pulls up the image. You can now make a comment in there and actually add that to your idea book. And this is that great view in my room feature. It's a lot of fun. I was just speaking at an event in Boston, actually, at a showroom, and they were saying that they love this. They use it all the time because they have all these great lighting features 
But a lot of people have that same issue of, oh, I know I love it, but I'm just not sure how it's going to look in my space. Now you can literally show them what it's going to look like there. So again, a couple new things that we have in idea books. You could add or edit collaborators, sort them by comments or people that you're sharing it with. Use sketch, view in my room, and that add to house button to get really interactive and just make that whole planning process a whole lot easier for everybody. Now, I did want to touch on, and that was perfect that we had a question about it, um, new features that we have in our Pro Plus program, that is the local advertising. So just to be clear how House works, if you're unfamiliar, all of you get a free House profile, and you get to do all of the things I've talked about. You get to use as many idea books as you want, get as many photos, get as many reviews as you can. Everybody can look at those, it's all free. The Pro Plus program was designed because we got a lot of requests from professionals saying, yes, this is great, but now I'm really trying to target my business. I want these specific people in this specific area. So that's what the Pro Plus program does. That's the paid piece that anyone's interested. In. So it just makes sure that you're able to pick the people that you want to target. So when your photos are in the photo stream, when someone is looking in the professional directory, you're just going to show up higher. We really make sure that you're a little bit more featured. I thought I had a photo picture, but I don't. Um, we also do some subtle marketing. So your photos, they're going to be a little larger. They have little thumbnails that direct people to look at your projects. So this is something that, again, it's available to anyone or everyone. I say that with a little star. You know, we don't, we do have to limit the number of people that can do this. So obviously you can get that great exposure, but at any point, if you feel like it's something you're interested in, it's definitely something that I know Surefire can help you with and talking with an account manager of really what that pricing and availability looks like. So this is that pro spotlight. It's a little bit like the video, but this is actually an editorial piece where you are gonna sit down with one of our editors, pull together a piece that really highlights a project that you've worked on or one of your specialties, and then that would be published in our newsletter for everyone to see. So another thing that you can add if you're interested on your Pro Plus program. Another thing that's available in it is call tracking. So a lot of these features that we've been looking at have been about making your lives easier. So it was a little funny when we rolled this out for Pro Plus, we got all these calls saying, Oh, you have the wrong phone number on my house profile. Well, we actually just reassigned you a different one. Still rolls to you, it goes to you. But it's a way to track who's coming from your house account. So one, you know that it's working for you. But the other thing is we know the importance of response time. I was doing a webinar recently and it says if you respond to an inquiry within five minutes, you are a hundred times more likely to reach that person. We know that you can't always be sitting at your desk waiting for the phone to ring them. So this is a way you're out in the field. If someone calls you through your house profile, you're actually going to get an email notification hang, say, saying, hey, someone is trying to get a hold of you. They're going to want to talk about a project and make sure you call them back right away. You can also reference that message right away or part of that conversation. So it's something that you have the option to opt into as part of Pro Plus. I would definitely recommend it. I think it can make your life a whole lot easier. The other thing that we have as part of this kind of in closing, what, something that's really new, we have this new project match feature. This is available for our Pro Plus folks. So when a homeowner goes in and says, okay, I'm looking to hire this general contractor in my town of Expo, Minnesota, we are going to have, so a couple of our Pro Plus people are actually going to get a text message saying, hey, someone's trying to hire you. It looks like it's a project you'd be good for. Here's some high level information about what they're trying to do. Make sure you reach out and it's going to have that contact information. So just some of the things we're doing to try and make your life a little bit easier. All right. Well, thank you so much, Lindsay. That was fantastic. Um, so we're going to do, again, another quick poll before we get into, we got some great questions and the Google Home mini speaker giveaway. Um, but we want to do a quick poll on whether or not you want to schedule a consultation on either Tuesday, October 31st, or Thursday, November 2nd for a demo of the Surefire Local Marketing Cloud. Um, if either of those days don't work for you, just select please email, my, email me to schedule a call and we will follow up with you. Um, and then after your introduction to the cloud, you will receive the House ebook and a Google Chromecast. Um, so take a minute here to fill that out. And while everyone's doing that, we will um, answer some questions. So one question we got was, um, there's a little background to this. So typically I upload projects within one home that may include a variety of window treatments. However, I've been wanting to also categorize by product. For instance, I have a bunch of client photos of wood blind installation. Would I enter that as a wood blind project or as a wood blind idea book? So my recommendation would be, so one of the things that people like to see from you is the scope of projects you've worked on. 
So that's why we say whatever you do in a home, have that in your project. So I would keep it the way it is now, buy a home. But then what you can actually do is you can save your own photos to idea books. So that's how I would recommend you do it. Just go back through, and I think you said wood blinds. Go through all of your projects that have that and save it now into that wood blind idea book. So people can still see the scope, they can see how it changes a room, but if they wanna just look at all the different varieties that you carry, they can see that in your idea book. And it also will cut down on the work that you have to do instead of uploading it twice. All right, and then there's a second part to this question too. Are idea books viewable for everyone to easily see or only if they type in wood blinds? How is it searchable? So they are viewable. So that's where, again, you know, if you have added these photos into your projects and you've added all that searchable information and then put them in an idea book, both of those will show up in search results. Um, wow, I just totally lost my train of thought. How are they viewable? So they are easy to find if someone goes in and does that search on there. When they come into your profile, they're also easy. They're sitting right there. People can see your projects are going to be at the top, and then they can also see all of your idea books. So it'll direct them into both places, and then they're both visible on your profile. Great. All right. And then next question, um, what is the best way to get more likes on photos slash page? So really, it comes back to being searchable is the thing. Um, the more people, you know, obviously you want to have good quality photos have that really robust profile. One of the good things that you can do, go into the professional directory and look at the people that are on the first page. It doesn't have to be in your area, but look at their profiles. Look at all the information they have in there. Do they have all their associations? You're gonna see that you're gonna be drawn to different things on there. Usually it's because they have a lot more information in there for people to look at, so they're more searchable. Focusing on those higher quality photos, of course, we're all drawn to that magazine quality. So that's where, you know, investing in some lighting. Yes, you can take it with your cell phone and that will be fine. Are people going to love it as much as that beautifully lit photo that a photographer has done? So really focus on those good photos. And then the biggest thing is adding text wherever you can. It's going to take a little extra time, but that's where you're going to get more people that are liking and saving your photos and that are following your profile which, you know, it isn't as important, but it, it is nice to have to see that people really like you, they wanna reference you again. Obviously, the more saves you get on a photo, it's gonna show up higher in our photo results because we know people like it. So it's worth that investment of time or having someone help you to go in and add that project description. Talk about what you're trying to do. Add descriptions on each one of your photos. Like I said, people are looking for that education piece on products and on you. So on the kitchen photos, talk about the different elements, why you use them. Again, that aging in place is so huge right now, or living in place, I think that's what someone told me to say the other day. Living in place, talk about those different features that you have and help educate. People really connect with that, and again, it's just adding more information. Really comes down to, you know, the more people can find you, the more they're kind of drawn into what you're doing, the more saves you're gonna get, and then it just becomes this great marketing machine for you. All right, um, next question. Uh, we have accidentally two profiles. Can we transfer the reviews from the one that needs to be deleted over to the main one? Yes, so no, never feel like you need to delete anything and redo it. If you send a note to support at House, they will actually be able to merge those two profiles together. So just log into your House account, You'll see contact us at the bottom, and that's where you can actually go in, submit a ticket, and then a customer service person will help you out with it. And it's actually a member of our team. Um, we don't outsource anything, so you'll get a house person that will help you through it. All right. Um, next question. So we have two more, um, and this one is kind of together. So uh, we are receiving many leads. However, they are small jobs we, could, we would normally not do. I know there's an option in our dashboard to set a typical job cost, but our jobs are custom, so it's difficult to, difficult to set an average cost. What is your suggestion to help us filter out smaller jobs? So I know that nobody really likes to talk about the money piece. It can be hard to put it out there, but this is the reality, especially like in your case, if you're trying to screen these leads that are coming in. So Put in there what I say, because you can do a range. So just do, okay, so it is custom, but really the majority, let's just, I'm just gonna pick some numbers. The majority of your projects are around that $500,000, I don't know. And then they go up to a million or something. If that's kind of where the majority of your projects are, I would put that in the range. Then underneath that is where you get to add some context. So you can actually add text underneath that number. So you can say, you know, typically this is where our projects fall. There is a little wiggle room on the lower end, and of course we will do larger projects. 
because we do all custom work. Then on each one of your projects, you have the ability to add a range on it. And add, in some of the photos, you can add a dollar sign. In the projects, you can add a price range on it. Again, I know not everyone is comfortable talking about it, but it's a good idea to let people know that they're looking at a $100,000 kitchen, let's just say. In the description, you can talk about the things that made that project more expensive that the custom work that you do is why your range falls into this. It's really gonna help people understand what they're looking at and have those realistic expectations. This is the cost. It's also gonna help when they understand why. It's not just that you're you know, wanting to be a billionaire, it's because of the quality custom work that you do. So for anyone else that's having that issue, um, you know, you're just not getting the leads that you want, that's where I would go in add that average cost, put those numbers, add some text if you want to give some context, go in and add that onto each project. And even if you're not willing to add on each project the specific dollar amount, if you don't want to get that specific, I would encourage you to talk about this is, when you look at our average project cost, this project was on the higher end of that because, and then use that education piece of why. It also can help reinforce, which is nice, all of the exceptional things and why your quality is so much better. Great. All right. So I know we're getting close to the end, so I want to move on to the Google Home Mini winner. And today's lucky recipient of the Google Home Mini is Karen Bloom. Congrats, Karen. Please email marketing at surefirelocal.com with your full mailing address, and we will ship that right out to you. So huge thanks again to Lindsay for joining us today, and thank you to all of our attendees. Please be sure to join us for more upcoming webinars in the future. For details on that, you can check out our website, surefirelocal.com. We have a link at the top of our homepage for our webinar that is coming up next week. Um, I want to mention one last time that we are offering that Google Chromecast and Housey book if you have a consultation. Um, and if you are interested and missed the poll, you can uh, email marketing at surefirelocal.com. And also please take a minute at the end to fill out the survey and let us know how we did today and what topics you would like to hear about in the future. Thanks again. Have a great afternoon.